Hey guys, welcome back. Mike here. Uh, continuing on the Unimat disassembly here, and uh, I've actually gotten some feedback with my little beginnings of uh, making videos here. And uh, some folks have told me to uh, hey include uh, taking this thing down and videoing uh, step by step how you dismantle and all that stuff. And I thought to myself, well, I want to do something a little different here. Um, there's for every video I would do, there's a hundred more videos already out there that are done about dismantling this these things. And I don't want to be long-winded because I can get long-winded. <laughs> Ask anybody who knows me. But I just want to hit on the finer points, I guess, and keep it short and simple. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick to that. So here we go. So I got other parts soaking. Um, I did the, uh, the chuck head, the spindle head, rather, and the motor mount, and the uh, spindle pulley. And that came out pretty good, but I'm going to have to change that anyway because, as you can see over here, and this is just a conglomeration of chaos, I got myself a DC motor. All right. And uh, just for the record, I don't, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm just, a, I'm just an amateur, uh, old geezer, having fun, trying something new. And so... Nothing here that you see here is uh, sponsoring me. I'm not uh, doing this for any money or anything. I'm just doing this. Actually, the only reason why I'm doing this is to rehab these. All right. Uh, not to get too personal, but I've had major surgery on my neck. Uh, my neck is no longer just flesh and blood. It's now thousands of dollars worth of titanium hardware. And every one of my uh, discs uh, in my neck have been fused so I'm relearning to basically walk and talk all over again use my hands my arms and my legs so this happened to come up and I'm doing this with this little aid and here I am that's why I'm doing it so I got a DC motor here direct current uh, it's called a PMDC for permanent magnet direct current motor and what it allows you to do is to have more torque at lower RPM settings um, the stock motor, the U90, the trusty U90, the heartbeat uh, of the little lathe, you know, does the trick and everything, but when you start taking a little bit of cut, it slows down. So in my little research and everything, I decided to get a DC motor and a controller. So there'll probably be, be a video on that later that's coming. That being said, I'm going to continue here. So I took the base apart. And some bases have screws. Their uh, their screws come down from the top and screw into the to the casting. And I think it has to do with whether you had an aluminum casting or an iron, a cast iron base. Mine are just cap screws. Got four of them, and these look like they're brand new. I took them out. I'm like, wow, these don't look 50 years old. The other thing I found out with these when I took these uh, rails off or the bedways is that they were extremely loose and I wondered whoever used this before me I, I, I well the guy I bought it from Brad I know you're smarter than that and I know you would have found that in fact I'm gonna probably text you later <laughs> and find out and see what you found uh, they were very loose so this is something you want to check when you take your lay the part your unimat um, the other I think the older models had fillerst filister screws okay those are those are single slot bladed um, screws and they got kind of a curvature to them called filister. I don't have those. I, I have this cap screws that go from the bottom. Okay, so I took those all out and the other point, one of the things I wanted to mention is you see this finish on here? See that? Okay, they don't make that anymore. That's called hammer green. All right, I don't know if my little $4.99 setup with my beat up Samsung phone will capture this is. This is kind of like a, a version of Kennedy Toolbox's Wrinkled Brown, if uh, you guys know what that is. This is called Hammer Green. As you can see, this, this finish is pretty worn off. Um, and I want to tell you guys, if you're going to you know, get your lathe up and running, take it apart, dismantle it, restore it, and put it back together, grease it, clean it. When you get your parts with the Hammer Green on it, don't hit it with the harsh brake clean, brake cleaning fluid chemicals, uh, carburetor cleaner, anything. Use plain old hot water 
and dish soap. And even then, don't use very much. Uh, use a light brush. I got a cheap old paint brush. Little 98 cent, you know, with all the hairs falling off all the time. And that's all I did. I filled up the shop sink with hot water, a little bit of dish soap, and I just went over it. And anything that was left on here, I, I, I don't care. I call it patina. I'm going to leave it because this stuff is very fragile. All right. I was pretty pleased with the results. Uh, this uh, came out, not much came off. I noticed on the spindle head that uh, when I was taking this apart, um, I saw it started to flake and peel over here um, just by taking off the alignment pin. So I knew right away I was going to be dealing with something that was fragile. I mean, it's 50, 60 years old. And hammer green paint is not available anymore. I'm told there's something out there like it, but I'm not even going to mess with it. So when you put these back together, um, the parts that don't have the hammer green paint on it, I bought a can, a gallon, a carb cleaner. Carb cleaner, parts cleaner, and I'm not going to show it to you, but it comes with a handy little basket that hangs right inside the gallon can, and I'm sure you guys and gals out there are familiar with it. Um, I let the stuff soak overnight. All right, You can see the parts in there. You can see uh, that's for the cross slide, the main uh, screw. Here's the cross slide ways. They were in kind of rough shape. I'm going to take a, a Scotch-Brite wheel to them because they got, they got some uh, burrs on them from the hold-down screws that are on the bottom of the cross slide. And those are in there too soaking, by the way. They're little, they look like little tiny t set, screws, set screws. All right, now imperial size to me it looks like it's about a 1032, um, and I'm just going to stick with imperial sizes because that's what I've been used to my whole career. But those left some little marks on there. I'm going to buff them out, and then I think these will be fine, and I'm going to start putting the slide back together. I'll let those dry. There's there's some spindle. There's some hand cranks. Th this thing, these things are so cool. All the lays, uh, manual lays, engine lays, CNC lays that I've been used to over my whole career. And then I see these tiny little things, and they're so well made. It's awesome. I can't wait to make some cuts and start making some stuff. Anyways, so I'm letting that uh, probably drip dry. And I'm going to start to put this together. And I'm going to start with the main bedways. Another thing I was going to show you guys is uh, whenever you take anything apart, especially with threads, go ahead and get yourself a tap or a die for the, for the OD threads and chase your threads. Um, there's tons of literature out there on the Internet on what thread sizes they are. I'm not going to go through them. But, again, these people that uh, manufactured this little A were thinking, and they kept all their screw sizes to a minimum. There's like three sizes. I think it's an M4. Uh, M5 and an M6. You can't miss. So grab an M4, an M5, and an M6 tap and die and keep them on your bench and keep them handy. You just grab them and start chasing your threads. You get all the gunk out of there. That way you don't run the risk of running all that stuff into your screws and stuff. That's just a habit of mine. I'm sure you guys do it too, but hey, if I'm going to do this video thing, I guess I'm going to go all out. Okay, so I did those. Oops, I missed one. And uh, these threads are in good shape. They're just full of gunk, so I can just turn these by hand. Otherwise, you got your Tommy bar with your, with your uh, tap handle, you know. But my hands aren't the greatest anymore, so this is a little easier for me. All you people that have sustained uh, traumatic brain injuries out there or spinal cord injuries, I have a newfound respect for you all because uh, this one stopped me right in my tracks so I'm learning all the stuff to do all over again and hope to be back to work soon and I wish everybody the best out there because it sucks being active and having my hands into everything for 56 years and all of a sudden I, you know this happens out of nowhere so I can empathize with you and then once everything's clean, you know, you just start putting it back together. And uh, try not to leave a gigantic mess, you know. Always looks like a what's left of a war zone. But you just start putting it back together. And this is part of the fun. And you really get to know how your Unimat works. 
and you also lose tooling because I just create such a mess. In the next few videos, I'll, if there is any, I'm not promising anything, but I, I do. And I am having fun, and this being my, I put out a couple of watch videos. I was working on. Uh, I I did a, a shop tour of my little watch shop that I had. But I've my wife and I have since moved, and uh, all my watch stuff is packed up. So I've been feeling kind of left out and lonely and everything, and then all of a sudden this lathe shows up, and I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, in the next few videos, you might see uh, my faithful sidekick. Uh, his name is Otis. Otis is a rescue, and these kinds of dogs are commonly, re well, this breed of dog is commonly referred to as a pit bull. In actuality, he is a American Bull Terrier, but the AKC recognizes pit bull because everybody says pit bull. Whatever. Anyway, Otis is a great dog. He's my shop dog. Hangs out with me. Follows me around. I love him. Uh, when I'm up in the watch shop, I call him my watch dog. Get it? Watch dog. See what I did there? Okay. And um, he's not with me right now. He's out in the house. But, he, you know, he'll be out in the shop here with me probably next time. And until next time, you guys take care. We're progressing. Uh, hopefully should have this uh, base done and carriage. And I'll be... Working on putting that new DC motor and controller on, along with the wiring and everything else. Wish me luck, because I'm not an electrician. I'm, I'm an old gearhead, a, a, a dial cranker, and an old, uh, an old wrench. So this stuff has always been a challenge, but I always enjoy it because it's something different. You guys take care. We'll see you next time. See ya.